TU100 My Digital Life Sense and Sense Ability. This programming exercise is going to make use of the Sense Board. So plug it into your computer using the supplied USB cable and ensure the board is connected and registered by Sense. Open Project 17 and then save it again with the underscore SOL extension. In this exercise, all blocks will be associated with the stage, so no sprites are necessary. The following sense board component will be used. That's the detachable light sensor. This sends decimal numbers from 0.0, .0 which is very light, to 100.0, which is very dark. And that's sent to the sense environment, depending on the ambient light level. So if you plug your light sensor into the input socket, labeled A, and then the slider that you can see here sends decimal numbers to the sense environment, depending on the position. Then there's the six LEDs, numbered one to six, and each has a different colored light. The sense environment can send signals to each LED, switching it on or off. By default, each LED is off. The project contains a partially completed program and when completed the program should read the values sent to your SenseBoard's light sensor. If conditions are bright, only the SenseBoard's LED 6, the red one, should be lit and if conditions are dark, only LED 1, the green one, should be lit. Although your program is ultimately going to monitor light levels via the SenseBoard's light sensor, to begin with, you'll monitor the position of the SenseBoard slider instead, simply because it is easier to move the slider around than it is to vary the ambient light level. The values of the slider position will be used to model light level readings. This will enable you to get the logic of your program, its essential structure features, correct, before introducing the potential complexity of light level readings. If the current value is less than 35, roughly corresponding to average light levels, then only LED 6, the red one, should be lit. If the value is 35 or more, then only LED 1, the green one, should be lit. So let's look at the incomplete script. And you can see that below when the green flag is clicked block is a forever block. And a forever block is used to form a loop, a bit like the repeat block that you used with the polygon drawing program. However, while a repeat block executes the blocks within its jaws a set number of times, depending on the value of its input box, a forever block executes the blocks within its jaws forever, or at least until you stop the program by clicking on the stop button. In this script, the forever block is used to enable the program to continue reading light levels until you tell it to stop. The program has one variable called light reading inside the forever block and there's a set light reading block that, that sets the slider value. Uh, this will set light reading to the value given by the sense board slider. And in due course, you'll amend this so that the light reading is set to the value given by the light sensor. In general, the sensor value block gives the current value of the specified sense board sensor. So run the program and experiment with moving the sense board slider up and down. When the slider is moved to the far left, the light reading variable watcher should show the value of 0.0. .0. And when it's on the far right, it should show a value of 100.0. In fact, if you double click on the variable watcher, you'll see that the light reading value is displayed with greater precision, that is with more digits after the decimal point. If you continue double clicking, you'll see that there are two further forms of display, but you don't need to use those at the moment. Uh, double click until the variable watcher is returned to its usual display. Click on the stop button when you want to stop the program. And now we're going to investigate how to turn the sense board LEDs on and off. And if we go to the outputs palette, drag an LED block into a clear space in the scripting pane and we can experiment by entering different values into its two input boxes and running the block by double clicking on it. Just that block for now. So here you can see that we can turn on LED 6 and turn it off. LED 1 and so on. You can turn all the lights on, all the lights off. At the beginning of the script, we're going to initialize all six LEDs to off. 
in case any get switched on outside the program. And directly under the green flag block, we're going to add an LED block and then select the input values that will switch off all the LEDs. And having initialized all the LEDs, our program should repeatedly obtain the slider reading from the sense board. This is already done by having the block set light reading to slider sensor value within the forever block. Each time a slider value is obtained, our program should turn on and off the relevant LEDs according to that value. And this is the part that we're now going to complete. First, place an if else block from the control palette within the jaws of the forever block directly below the set light reading block. Next, provide your if else blocks hexagonal recess with a Boolean condition formed using one of the comparison blocks. The condition should represent the statement the value of light reading is less than 35. Now position a pair of LED blocks within the if else blocks upper jaw. This pair should switch off and on the correct LEDs if the Boolean condition you've just constructed is true. Position another pair of LED blocks within the if else blocks lower jaw. This pair should switch off and on the correct LEDs if the Boolean condition you've just constructed is false. Save your project and run the program. Move the slider on the sense board slowly and observe the LEDs and the value displayed by the light reading variable watcher on the stage. When you're happy that your version of the program is working, we'll switch from reading slider values to reading light levels. We'll change the block that sets the light reading to the sensor value and have it set the light reading to the input A sensor value. Now if we shine a torch at the sense board's light sensor to simulate brightness and switch the torch off to simulate darkness, you can see the results. Alternatively, we could move the light sensor around to achieve different light levels. So you could move the sensor nearer to a window and away from the window. And if we observe the LEDs switching on and off and the values displayed by the light reading variable, we can see those in the watcher on the stage. If your program appears not to be working correctly, it may be that the average light sensor reading of 35 is not appropriate for your light conditions. In this case, observe the light reading variable watcher and get an idea of the range of light values you can obtain by varying the ambient light levels. And then replace the 35 in your program with a value roughly at the middle of your range. When the program runs, first all the LEDs are switched off. Then the blocks inside the forever blocks jaws are executed repeatedly from top to bottom. And each time the value of the sense board's light sensor is obtained and this value is checked. And if it's less than 35, then LED one is turned off and LED six is turned on. If not, in other words, if the value is 35 or more, then LED six is turned off and LED one is turned on. In fact, the use of a variable in this program is not strictly necessary. Here's an alternative layout of a program that will do the same job. And the reason the variable can be admitted in this program is that the light sensor value is required only once for comparison with 35. In general, if a value, be it from the sense board or input from a user, is required more than once, then holding its value in a variable is a sensible and often the only approach that we can make. That's all for this video. Bye for now.